What's up team? I hope everyone is doing well and your products are coming along. In this video, I'm going to show you my process for installing arrow catch hood locks on Benji. Now obviously this install will be specific to my car, but the process that I'm going to show you can be applied to virtually any hood. Now in terms of labor and attention to detail, arrow catch style hood locks are the most labor intensive version that I've used and traditional hood pins would be the least labor intensive. Hood latches can be functional or aesthetic, but in my case they are functional because at speed the hood will sometimes catch air and move a good amount. And I did try adjusting the OEM latch down and adjust the bump stops up, but it didn't eliminate the problem and actually created some fitment issues. And the last thing that I wanted was something snapping on the hood and opening at 100 plus miles an hour. As usual, there will be timestamps in the description for you to reference and feel free to ask questions or add to the conversation in the comments section. Some of the tools you'll need is masking tape, a marker or a pen, a drill, Dremel or rotary tool, and a ruler. Now I suggest doing one side at a time, and once the first side is complete, you can create a template for the other side, which should help with making everything symmetrical. The first thing you want to do is find a viable surface of the hood to install the locks. The surface should be relatively flat with a similar surface area with respect to the latch. Then there has to be a solid structure to mount the anchor bolts to. Once you establish those, locate where the anchor bolt holes will be on the solid structure. Make sure that location works with the flat surface of the hood, otherwise you could run into fitment issues. You also have to consider what might be affected by the anchor location. In my case, the headlights would be directly underneath the bolt. So, I have to consider if there will be clearance issues when the anchors are mounted. With that being said, I'm going to remove the headlights so when it's time to drill, install, and adjust the anchors, they won't be in the way. Then I suggest covering your engine bay because those metal fragments and carbon particles can get everywhere. Now that I've decided on a location, it's time to start the install. I use the center punch to mark where the hole for the anchor bolt will be drilled on the crossbar. Then I drill the hole with a step-back drill. And you can use whatever metal drill bit you want. Once the hole is drilled and cleared of debris, apply a rust sealer or metal etching paint on the exposed metal and this should help prevent rust issues. Once the paint dries, temporarily install the anchor bolt. Now for my hood, I have to adjust it to sit as low as possible. It can be different for your application. Now that the anchor is in, I apply a small dab of anti-seize to the top of the anchor. Then I bring the hood down until it makes contact with the top of the anchor. And what that did was let me know exactly where the hole needs to be on the hood. I use anti-seize, but you can use something that easily transfers from contact. It doesn't have to be anti-seize. Then I tape the painted surface of the hood, and this will help minimize chipping during the drilling process. So this is the point where you pause and make sure everything is lined up and located how you want it. The next step is to drill the hole in the hood. For arrow latches, there's more wiggle room for error because the hole is significantly larger than traditional pins. And once you are sure you're okay with the location, you drill the hole. You're now at the point of no return, so yay. Drill from both sides to clean the hole for of the hood. And now you know exactly where the anchor lies in relationship to the hood when it is closed. And the next step is to mark the hood for cutting the arrow latch shape. The anchor can be rotated 360 degrees, so you can orient your latches however you want. The important part is to make sure that the anchor aligns with the locking pin. What I did was mark the sandwich plate that comes with the latch with a pencil. I marked it where the slots for the lock pin are. This gives me a visual reference on where the anchor and slot should line up. From there, I will take the sandwich plate and set my orientation. Now I chose my latches to have some angle pointing downward to make it look a little more aggressive. This is why you tape the painted surface. I can now mark the line for cutting and where the anchor and lock pin intersect. You can mark it up as much as you need, and if you're not happy, you can just take the tape off and retape it. I suggest using a pen or a marker for your final lines so it's very clear when you are cutting. It gets a little dusty, so you want something that pops out. You also should mark the disposable area so there will be no confusion on what gets cut out and what stays. 
before cutting, I strongly suggest you put on a mask and goggles because the dust from cutting is very harmful. You do not want particles of carbon, resin, fiberglass, or anything like that in your lungs or eyes. If you can, wear long clothes because it's very irritating to your skin. My garage was literally 100 degrees, so I just had to take a cold shower after cutting. Now we're ready to cut the hood. Using the rotary tool and cutting disc bit, I cut my long straight lines first. Then I cut out the larger middle sections without getting too close to the curves. For the curves, I use a sanding drum bit. Sanding doesn't take long, and if you take your time, you can match the curves pretty easily. Once the full shape is cut out, I test fit the latch. There's a little bit of interference, so I lightly sand the shape until the latch drops in. Now the latch does have some depth, so in my case, I have to open up the underside of the hood in order for the latch to completely settle in its mounting area. When test fitting, make sure your tape is not in the way. You want to shave off the least amount of material as possible. With the latch fully set in the hole, you can now check to see how the anchor and lock pin align. The pin should slide in and out with little to no resistance, and make sure that your hood height is where you want it to be. With the latch in the hole, mark the points where the mounting screw holes will be on the hood. The space in between the mounting holes and the latch is pretty thin, so when drilling these holes, you do not want to put a lot of downward pressure. Take your time and support the drill with both hands, and as soon as the drill bit goes through, lift off. Now take the provided mounting bolts and test fit them in the holes. Once they slip into the holes easily, you can prep the sandwich plate. The kit comes with locking nuts that push into the sandwich plate. Install the nuts with a nylon side facing away from the flat side of the plate. You shouldn't have to worry about them falling out because they are designed to fit in pretty tight. For my hood, the plate needs to be positioned first, then the latch will slide into place. Holding the plate onto the hood, I thread the mounting bolts in one at a time by hand. I don't tighten any of the bolts until they are all a couple threads in. Now I chose to lightly tighten the middle bolts first and then work my way to the outers. Then I check the alignment of the anchor and pins again. After confirming the lock works properly, we're done, right? Nope. Now that my anchor height and orientation is set, I have to cut the excess threads off the anchor so I can put my headlights back in. I used my larger cutting wheel to make sure that would happen pretty easily. I reinstall the anchor and now that side is complete. Now we have to mirror what we just did. It doesn't have to be a repeat of the first side because we can use the side that's installed as a template. So it should go a little faster, but don't rush. Put masking tape on the opposite side just like you did the first side. Then find at least two points on the hood that can be referenced for measurements. You can either measure the distance from the installed hood latch to those points or you can use a piece of paper or cardboard or whatever you want to make a template. I made a template. I used printed paper and the rubbing technique. For this to work, you have to line up the paper and mark the reference points. Then temporarily tape the paper onto the installed side of the hood. Once the rubbing is done, take off the paper and cut out the latch rubbing and tape the paper to the other side of the hood, making sure that all the references line up. With the references lined up, I mark out where the latch should be on the hood. For the anchor, I just use the bump stop and the top of the crossbar to measure where my hole should be. Just like the first latch, I install the anchor first. Then I drill and cut the hole for the latch assembly. And because I use a template, I'm able to duplicate the angle of the first latch pretty easily. Then I cut out my markings, confirm fitment, and the other side is done. I did put a little grease on the metal parts of the latch and then I applied a UV blocker coat on the outside of the latch to protect the plastic. After that, the install is complete and there's no movement from the hood. The kit does come with these rubber bump stops. You can place them on the anchors if you feel the need. So I hope this helps if you're considering installing or are currently installing hood locks. And just like any other project or upgrade, remember, Take your time. And that's all I have for this video. Remember to like and subscribe, and of course, stay tuned and thanks for watching.